National Hurricane Center highlights a new wave off the coast of Africa on the climatological peak of hurricane season. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We'll talk about some ensemble projections for this wave, and then we'll talk about just why this season has been so quiet. If you've seen videos in the past, you may already know the answer to this as we've highlighted it at length this season on the national forecast coming up in just a bit. I'd like to know your thoughts. Are we going to pop off? on the second half of this hurricane season. Post that in the comments for me. There is the wave that's going to emerge, emerge off of Africa over the next day or so and work its way across the main development region of the United States. Yes, there's still some of those things working against development that we saw with what was Invest 91. Now, that was the one that was all hyped up. and We talked about, okay, it's not that conducive out there. Slow the roll here, tap the brakes a little bit on the development. With that one, then it went poof. 20% shot for development over the next few days. And again, slow development is possible. Hurricane Center using that word, that phrase, slow development is possible. So now I want to show you some of the ensembles. We're going to dial up the other weather computer. We're going to take a look at the Euro first. And here we go. Uh, this is 10 days out. This is going to be on September 20th. And you see here that most of these guys, most of the ensemble members, take it northeast of the islands and continue to get it up and out of here. Remember, at this stage of the game, ensembles are the best thing to look at because there's different initial conditions put into the ensemble so that we get a wide variety of solutions. At this stage in the game, we just don't have much data, so that is why ensembles are much more helpful. If you're watching some of my videos prior to Invest 91L when we were tracking that, ensembles showed a very minimal threat with 91L, and that's why we continue to preach that to not look at the individual model runs that can get a little wild out there, as we all know. Okay, so here's the GFS ensemble, even more of that swinging to the north and east of the islands. Most of the members are going there. And then the Google AI, the Google DeepMind AI ensemble suite also showing most of these members taking this storm up and out until it does. Of course, we watch. There are a few closer to the islands here, um, but it's kind of, it's like a secondary wave. So this is the first wave right there. And then you're going to see that kind of work its way up and out. And you see the ones that kind of are riding low are a secondary wave. That's way far out into the future. I will say... And if you saw some of the videos on the channel last week, I'll keep on referencing that so we can go back and, and look and you can see what I'm talking about. The Google AI killed this thing, 91L, that other wave, well before it got to the islands. The Google AI was right. The Euro AI was right. Um, the Euro ensembles were correct in that as well. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the peak of hurricane season. September 10th, it marks the climatological peak. Remember, I always have kind of a bone to pick with the day. Yeah, it's right smack dab in the middle of peak season. However, we have a season for peak, and it really starts on that third week of August through the middle of October. So while tropical climatology or those tropical storms, the number of them start to decrease in the back end of the season, we know that there are high impact storms that still happen in late September and through the first couple of weeks of October. Once we clear that third week of October, then we really see you, you climb down on the other side of the mountain. So the peak of hurricane season officially today, but again, we are still in peak season for about another four, five weeks. And then things really uh, try to focus mainly in just the Western Caribbean where we watch for our friends in Central America through November. Here's where we stand. This is the May forecast kind of overlaid with where we are right now. Uh, 13 to 19 storms were forecast from NOAA and the National Hurricane Center. You see we're a little behind that. We only have had six to date with one of those becoming hurricanes. Uh, that same one, Aaron, becoming a major Cat 5 hurricane. So we are at 6, 1, and 1. The average for the entire season is 14, 7, and 3. And I'll throw out some more numbers for you. Where we stand or where we should be to date as of September 10th is 8, 3, and 1. So the only number that we are on par with right now are major is a major hurricane, which we have one. We're supposed to be at one. So we are running behind schedule in terms of an average season. Let's hope we don't go and make it up like we did last year at this time. So there are the six name storms, Andrea, Barry, Chantal, Dexter, Aaron, and Fernand. Aaron being the only hurricane in a Cat 5. That is a really weird look 
when you see six named storms, five of those are tropical storms. Then you have just one behemoth cat five. Chantal being the most impactful one on the list. Again, dropping a foot of rain in North Carolina. Barry, of course, it's remnants anyway. It was no longer a tropical system. It kind of worked with the front, but the remnants of Barry had its hand in uh, the flooding in Texas on the 4th of July weekend. So again, we have had a couple of very impactful storms. Chantal being the biggest impact and directly related. Again, Barry was also super impactful, but that was just kind of peace with the tropical moisture surging up of what was left with it. Another way to categorize the season is ACE. So I just want to give you all the perspective here so you, you hear the whole story. Because there are some people out there that would be like, okay, they're just going to name these storms to, to pad the numbers if they're weak. And no, they're only naming them if they are meeting the criteria of what a tropical cyclone is. But there's also another way to see if it's average or below average. And this is ACE, accumulated cyclone energy. I show this a lot on the channel. We're at 38.98. And if you don't know, this number is calculated once a storm becomes a tropical storm. More ACE is generated the stronger the storm is and the longer it's out there. So the average to date is uh, just about 50. Aaron, remember Aaron, Cat5, was out there for a while? It produced 32.2 of the season's 38.98 ace. So it's wild. If it wasn't for Aaron, we would be way below average in terms of that number. So there's a lot of work to be done, and hopefully we do not do that work, unlike last year, to make up in the ace department as well. So again, I want to give you guys the whole story and talk about transparency. So why? Why have we been so quiet? Well, if you are a frequent viewer of the channel and these videos, and I hope you are, and if you're not, please consider subscribing because we talk about the weather, we nerd out about the weather, and we use sound science and meteorology. I've showed this chart a lot and have said that this was a huge problem for the storms. We like it. The storms do not. It's instability. Storms, in order to grow and sustain themselves need to have instability. Cooler air on top of warmer air. The gray line that you see on your screen that kind of goes down and then up and then back down, that's the average instability for the tropical Atlantic. The blue line that you see kind of squiggling all over the place, that is the instability for 2025. That little black circle that I have here, that's where we stand right now. And you see how far below that. And if you look all the way back, you see the month at the bottom there, all the way back from June on, we are way below that line. And in some cases with those dots, again, going down, that's just the trend line there, the actual line, we're way below that. We just have not been unstable. The Atlantic has been super, super stable, and it's really hard for thunderstorms to grow. Think of it as a lid. If you are a severe weather person, um, in order for severe weather to happen or thunderstorms to happen, you need to break the cap. Think of this as there is a giant lid on the Atlantic that the storms just can't break through. There was some help Aaron had, Madden Julian oscillation, and it helped give kind of like a shot in the arm to those thunderstorms and allowed Aaron to develop and thrive. But it's the lack of instability. And this is the second year in a row that that has happened. The one thing I want to caution, though, is what happens this time of the year? Of course, fall rolls around in a couple of weeks. And what happens during fall? We cool things off in the atmosphere. If you don't know, water maintains its temperature a lot longer than air. So it takes a lot longer to warm or cool water. So while the atmosphere is cooling because of the seasonal natural changes, the water is still relatively warm. So that is one way that we get instability to go up. And you do see the gray average line through the rest of September, October going up. That is why, because we're cooling the atmosphere around the very warm water. And naturally, that helps air to rise. And that's what defines instability there, cooler air on top of warmth. That is one of the reasons why, as soon as we got to the end of September last year, we had Helene. And then the switch flipped, and it was gangbusters until the middle of November. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case again, but we thought prior to the season that we would struggle early on. And again, I had the video to prove it, uh, the preseason video. And then we'd likely see a flurry of activity where we would have hurricane season pretty much in that four to six week window 
from late September to the middle of October. So that's one of the things we are watching and obviously hoping does not happen. And I, I know people will comment because I've seen it already. Please don't confuse me trying to break down the answers of why it's quiet as to me hoping that it's not quiet. I live in a hurricane-prone area in Florida. I have a family, I have a house. I don't want this stuff, okay? I don't think many people do. Uh, Florida's been battered over the past few years. I want nothing to do with that. Um, so as a scientist, as a meteorologist, I try to look for answers. It's supposed to be rocking right now. It's supposed to be active, and it's not. So why isn't it? There's part of the answer, and it's the instability. That's most of the answer, and the Atlantic has just been very stable. Climate Prediction Center outlook over the next few weeks. So this is long range now, 17th to the 23rd. Uh, they are highlighting an, a secondary wave here in that period. So this is not the wave that's rolling off of Africa. So they still believe that there is a little bit more to be had when it comes to those African easterly waves working off of Africa. But then they've also highlighted down here in the... Uh, Central America area, Central American gyre area, Southern Gulf, Western Caribbean. GFS Ensembles, by the way, is hinting at something in that time time period. Let me show you. I'm going to take this out into the future. And showing a little bit of something. Again, just a few members online. Those are those lines coming out of Central America. Nothing concrete, but the Climate Prediction Center also highlighting that. Um, that's where you look. Okay, that is climatology at this point. And then here we go from September 24th through the 30th. That area remains highlighted. And there's another area highlighted um, in the main development region of the Atlantic. By that point, we're getting ready to shut down those waves coming off of Africa. But nonetheless, still watching, it's once we get into October, the waves rolling off of Africa really start to wind down a little bit. Um, but something we always watch, of course. So again, we might see like last year, those waves be able to survive a little bit longer due to the fact that we are watching, you know, this kind of change where we're really backloading these seasons, severe weather risk for tomorrow. As we look across the country, it's going to be towards the mountains from Billings to Rapid City, back up into Northern Minnesota, including the mountains of Colorado, back into Eastern Utah, Colorado Springs, Northern New Mexico, low end severe risk. That is a marginal risk. Big dip in the jet stream to help bring some cooler air to the west. You see that right there. Again, this is going to be your uh, key player on Thursday in the temperature department that we have the greatest chance for below normal temperatures uh, underneath that upper low. That typically what's happened, a little showery as well, unsettled underneath that low and where that trough ejects a little bit that's where we're expecting the stronger thunderstorms to the east of that upper low from billings to denver to rapid city and just north of albuquerque as we watch that future radar for the entire country i like to show this to give you just an idea of what's happening countrywide there we go through the early afternoon three o'clock we have those scattered downpours popping in the west we have some heavy rain in South Central Florida, a stalled front has been plaguing us for the last few days. I think it's going to focus more Lake Okeechobee and South rather than the Orlando area and North like it's been. There's those scattered thunderstorms again pop in as we get in towards the latter stages of Thursday evening. There's 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Mountain Time, 7 o'clock Western with those scattered downpours and thunderstorms still hanging around, uh, hanging about near the Rockies and points to the West. You can even see that little swirl from our upper low that is just chilling out there over the next couple of days for us in the West. And you can clearly see there, look at that, 60s in San Francisco, 70s in Portland. We've broken our heat. We're back to the 90s in Denver, mid-90s in San Antonio, feeling very nice in New England, we are warming things back up ever so slightly in the Northern Plains and Upper Midwest. And after the fall-like feel that we had, blowtorch coming back. September 16th to the 20th, this is the long ur range outlook, the 6 to 10-day outlook here. And you see all that red, super high shot of above normal temperatures. All right, I crammed a lot in there, but I wanted to get that out. And I, I wanted to talk about really the reason why it's been so quiet. I'm not too concerned about that wave out there right now. Of course, I'm watching it closely. Um, but the bigger thing is, are we going to get are we going to get that big second half flurry like what we saw last year that saw 11 named storms from September 24th on 
seven of those becoming hurricanes, which is a record. Let's hope we don't have a repeat performance of that. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in. I'll catch you soon.